We're going to start with our next talk. We have Gintari Urban talking about a strongly typed Python. So let's give her applause, please. <coughs> <coughs> OK, hi. Hi, everyone. I uh, hope you can hear me all right. Um, so for the start, I just wanted to introduce myself quickly. Um, so I'm Gintari, as mentioned. Um, I'm coding in Python for about six, seven years. Uh, I started from uh, OpenStack and infrastructure engineering. Now I'm more uh, in a fintech. Uh, so I work for the company called Fog Machine. I'm software backend engineer there. Uh, this, why this is important, I will mention in a couple of slides later. Um, OK, so in this talk, uh, spoiler alert, um, quick one. Um, today, this morning, in a keynote, uh, we heard about uh, my PyC, uh, which is a uh, strong type uh, Python compiler and uh, some ideas in this area. So this talk, I'm not going to um, talk about any alternative version of Python compiler, but this is more like using vanilla uh, Python that we all are comfortable with and uh, trying to do it yourself, strong, uh, uh, sorry, type checking and validations in runtime. And I will give you some ideas why we found this is important and useful for us. So let's start from answering this question. Um, OK, so to give you a background, why it was important for us in Fog Machine. So we're creating a core banking uh, platform. And to configure this core banking platform, we use a co concept called smart contracts. This is not a blockchain smart contract, uh, but this is a blob of Python code that we trigger at events at specific times. Some events are very hard to test manually. So for example, an event can happen in 10 years or once a year. So you would need a very robust, very good testing framework for that, so like simulation that runs. OK, and another thing someone told me, oh, you're so brave. You, you guys writing, uh, you're writing smart contracts in Python. That's <laughs> Uh, brave thing to do. And the reasons why it's brave and the reasons why it could be error prone is actually uh, type checking and type validations. Um, and we try to solve this problem, by, not problem, but challenge by introducing a um, runtime um, type checking and uh, validations um, in the smart, for the smart contract code. And we have very like um, intent, uh, very like sophisticated framework for testing this that allows uh, you to um, use the same library objects, uh, classes, functions in your unit test code, do whatever you want with them, but that will be protected and ensure that all the monkey patching will also be type validated. So let's answer again the question why. For the wider audience, not only for the our use case, but basically we learned, and like I, I personally learned, I think I can sum it, sum it to the three things. So why there's a need for strong typing sometimes. And so uh, t checking the types, or oh, sorry, uh, failing, it's not always an option when it happens. Sometimes you want to prevent. Um, very popular kind of use case. I think it's a, for middleware type of applications. What I mean by middleware is like, application or library between a main system, core system, and a user input. So I think it's uh, the middleware applications are like a, om almost the most important purpose is to get the input, manipulate it somehow, and pass it forward. So majority of bugs could be prevented with the type checking. And the last uh, thing that I already a bit mentioned, it's um, in unit tests, uh, dependencies are mocked. So basically, if we don't have a um, type enforcing, so you know, like by mocking dependencies that we can have false positive assertions. And basically this is worth to put in a meme. Um, having a unit test passing, you know, doesn't ensure that your code wouldn't fail in production in 10 years time or something. Okay, so quick disclaimer before we show the code. Um, all the code I will show today um, was inspired by my work in Fog Machine, but it was all uh, it is all my home project, which I kind of uh, uh, created in a bit different way. 
a new way to what I did in Thought Machine, but basically, uh, yeah, I needed to put this here. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, all examples, uh, I will uh, you know, show the uh, GitHub uh, link later. All examples are in GitHub, so, so don't worry, uh, you don't need to <laughs> you know, remember or note any codes, code. Um, so, okay, let's start from examples. Uh, probably you all know, uh, you know uh, what is the typing, but uh, about that in the next slide. Before we go into that, let's uh, look at example uh, function uh, that could be used in the smart contract or, you know, in similar uh, applications. So we have a submit payment function. It takes amount account ID reference, yeah, and um, it prints out uh, the types and uh, returns. Before returning, by the way, it actually submits the same payment in some kind of a sync queue or something. We don't ha have any feedback from it, for example. Um, we just, you know, we can't do anything about it after we submit. Okay, so let's run this with, uh, once with a float and once with a string value of a uh, amount. Um, as we all know, what will happen is uh, we'll just get uh, both uh, run successful and, you know, Python is forgiving here, which is great for some use cases, but, uh, uh, but not for every. Uh, so as I mentioned, we want uh, spam specific types because we later propagate those types into our async, you know, queue hidden away system to submit the same payment. And, uh, you know, that runs probably on, I don't know, Go or something that doesn't, you know, allow invalid types. Okay, <clears throat> let's do the same with annotating all the times, uh, types uh, at the top. Uh, this is now possible using Python typing module, uh, which is now part of core. And uh, uh, all those links up there, um, you know, quotes, peps, that, uh, that were recently introduced. And uh, we also, to, to quickly mention, we also have in this typing module a very useful method called getTypeHints, and that's an example at the very end of this. <clears throat> so I will show you what that type hints uh, function provides us. I will show you in the output in a second. So let's call the same submit payment with invalid type here after declaring the types. All right. So again, nothing, did, nothing bad did happen. Um, although we have this additional information that's useful, we have all those mentioned type hints uh, called type annotations. So we, we see that amount should be float, account ID should be string, while we see that after run, our account ID is integer, but nothing failed. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we had the type hints. We said that we wanted those specific types, but um, no type errors were raised. It's fine until it's not. Uh, so basically, just to give you a, uh, again, like a reason uh, for doing a s static or runtime validations here. Okay, so basically uh, static runtime validations would be like a linter, um, and there are quite many popular ones. I would say most popular is MyPy, um, and today we heard about MyPyC, which is, I guess, um, runtime um, add-on to it. Um, so what these type checkers could do um, is they could uh, like look at your code, like, like linter validate at all, and uh, raise any type errors. Also, we see the plugins in PyCharm and so on. So there are plenty of these uh, available in uh, open source community. Also, there's this Enforce module. Uh, there's, uh, it, it does the runtime validations. And uh, there's already plenty useful stuff out there that's ready to be used. Um, okay, so one against another. As I mentioned, if you want to use the same objects in the tests, and you want to ensure that they're not, you know, monkey patch with wrong uh, attributes, wrong type attributes, uh, so it's very important then to use the runtime validation against the static. Um, so we chose, and I found it very useful, to use the runtime validation, and I will show you today 
uh, how to do one yourself without using any dependencies in your code like Enforce library or any other. Um, and the reason why uh, we uh, created ourselves and like why I did work on this myself is that I found that sometimes using dependencies are you know, not enough uh, and, and could be you know, creating some incompatible versions later, uh, uh, could be incompatible with new versions later. And also they were missing some functionality that I added here in, in my examples and I will show you. Okay, so let's look at the code, finally. <laughs> yeah, okay, so as I mentioned, it's all in the GitHub, so don't worry. Uh, okay, uh, so we have the same function, right? Um, and now uh, the same function uh, will, be, uh, will be enforcing times and runtime. Uh, so what we do, we declare the function, we have the same type annotations, and at the top we add the decorator, and we run it with incorrect types. Yay, but finally. Uh, basically, this is what uh, we wanted for our use case. You know, if the function is run in like tests or in the simulation or any other process, you will right away, before calling the core system and failing then, you will right away stop and say, okay, you can't go further. The types are not correct. Okay, um, another example how this could be used, uh, the same validator. Um, by the way, uh, I don't know if you noted, but uh, the return type is also uh, declared with this arrow saying none. So basically we assume that our function returns none. But here let's add the one instead of none. Okay, we have the return type. The return value was not uh, correct type. How I actually did it. So the only thing that's, that was required here Actually, two. Uh, so one was type annotations. Uh, we needed to declare for all arguments of a function and the return time. And uh, this decorator. So how this decorator is implemented? Um, so we just intercept the, the function call. And before, uh, before returning a value, we validate all its arguments. And after returning a value, let's validate the return. That's very good. So how it actually is implemented. <laughs> so if you remember at the very beginning, I showed you the very useful typing um, function called getTypeHints. And in the comment string at the top, we see what it outputs, just a reminder. Um, so we have the all attributes and also namespace called return. That's just saying uh, what is the return type. Uh, so all the attributes and their types uh, in a as a Python object. And uh, we basically get the type information with the, this uh, helper function. And we iterate over these and assert that in args and keywords, we have all those there and all the correct types. And the return is just almost the same. Validate return is almost the same. Just there, we only care about one thing, the return. Okay, the last thing to show here is how to actually validate type. <laughs> and I will not show the code for underscore validate type, which is actually the, although I have it in appendix, if you wanna to, you know, uh, <laughs> to see the lot of lines of code, uh, we'll, we'll go into there. But the reason uh, why is just, it's, um, it's big. And uh, I think in the future, um, I already raised this question, we should intr introduce um, and add it to the uh, Python core typing module because valid type, this underscore valid type, <clears throat> is general enough uh, for the typing module, I think. What it does, it actually takes this expected type in a Python uh, format. Basically, it could be nested, it could be huge, it could be, let's say, um, dictionary of uh, uh, where the key is. Uh, I don't know, like a sequence, and then in the sequence we have like a number nested structure, it could be huge, right? And uh, we would give it uh, this expected type and the value, which we could recursively iterate and check whether it's a correct type. So I think in the future we might, uh, you know, want to have this 
somewhere uh, implemented once <laughs> and available and not to do the boilerplate code for any sort of use cases. Okay, so sorry for the uh, bunch of code, but uh, hopefully you didn't lose the attention. Let's look at more code examples. Um, okay, so for now on I would like to uh, show you guys a class, uh, let's see, a payment class, and how to do the uh, attribute validations. Uh, so here we'll have uh, two attributes that we want to eventually validate, uh, class level attributes, account ID and amount. Uh, and uh, this is how we would declare the types at the top of uh, these functions, sorry, uh, of these attributes. And then uh, look, note that we inherit from a meta class called strong typing, and I will show you how it's implemented in the next slide. Okay, so what we're doing here at the end on the runtime, we'll like to, we like to instantiate the method with, sorry, uh, class with correct types. But later on, let's change the type. Let's change the attribute to be the incorrect type. Okay, we have the failure, which is very useful. And um, uh, that actually is like an example of what could be done in a test. As you test along, you might want to change the values and you obviously want to ensure that always the object is a correct type. Okay, so we have this error which we wanted. How it's actually implemented? Uh, the meta class, uh, I heard in a couple of talks that this is a, you know, no no zone, but uh, let's uh, see. Uh, maybe it's not so dangerous. Um, so, the meta class allows you to, before initializing a class, it allows you to add some attributes onto the class. And we'll use this information to add each attribute uh, onto the class, each attribute set attribute and get attribute methods. And in the set attribute, we add intercept one tiny bit, which is validate type. So at any point anyone wants to set attribute on that class, we will set it before, uh, so validate it, validating before setting every time. Uh, okay, let's see how else we can use this meta class at, by adding a bit more code to it. Um, to do the method uh, arguments validation. So we have here the get status method, which should uh, get the timestamp as an argument of a daytime. Let's try running it once with correct daytime, uh, with correct val value, and another time with incorrect type. And what we get here, okay, this is what we wanted. Uh, so we get the error saying that it was incorrect type. How we achieved it? Again, by adding a, a bit more code to the same strong typing meta class. So what I did here, if you remember this decorator that we had uh, for the submit payment function, so we just looped through all the class attributes, figured out which of these are uh, methods, they have call uh, attribute, and decorated those. So this decorator, I wouldn't show it because it's like almost the same uh, as the validate function decorator. It's just, you know, for, for methods with self. Um, okay, <laughs> so probably go all, all like that, but uh, uh, I promise you a price. Is it visible? Okay, so here's the price. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, as in price as a present. <laughs> so, um, we added a bunch of code and have the meta classes. Maybe we can get out of uh, this some extra thing that will come for free. So yes, indeed we can. Um, let's, uh, let's use uh, the type annotations that we already set, uh, you know, as a, something that could generate automatically a doc strings for us with all that information that's already there in the type annotations. So here we have the payment and all the methods uh, with, uh, and calling the doc strings on those. They don't uh, show any information about uh, the type annotations. And uh, the, the example at the, at the bottom is what I actually wanted. So we already have all those annotations. Maybe we can automatically get the doc string like that out of them. 
So how, how could it be achieved? We need to attach somewhere the description of each uh, attribute or uh, argument. So Python is so forgiving, it allows to do something like this. We, we have this new class that we declared, which stores two things. It stores both type and a description. Um, so this is literally the same code just everywhere. Instead of um, assigning a attribute or argument to type, we uh, assign it to two things, like type and description. OK, the result. This is what we wanted. Um, so now, like the doc strings are actually not detached from the real code that validates stuff. So it actually is accurate and all the time consistent with your uh, with your implementation of a function. Um, and you know, like you can't really use it if you set wrong val uh, wrong types. So therefore, it should be consistent all the way through the life cycle of your code. How it's actually achieved? It's, um, it's achieved by, uh, as I said, Python is forgiving. It's just, let's just uh, have this class called type, and we set the description and type there. And uh, before exiting the method decorator, we'll add the function docs. Um, and uh, in the add the function docs, we just inflate the doc string with uh, type annotations, uh, the type annotations in string format. And this is how it's done. So basically, loop through the type annotations, extract all the information from there, which is already there, and just put it in a string. Um, and one, one last example, promise. It's uh, uh, that uh, if anyone's interested and found it useful, uh, you can also do it yourself uh, data structures, and we found a big use for it, like uh, type tuple, type list, type um, dictionary. This is type tuple example. You would just literally use the same class, sorry, meta class, and uh, have a strong type data structures. And uh, the prints over there at the end, um, they go like this. Uh, so it only allows to instantiate this tuple with correct data types. And if we try to use the incorrect ones, we get the uh, type error. Yay. So thank you for listening. Let's look at the uh, sum summing up um, and um, uh, basically conclusions. Um, so I think uh, ty a typing module in Python is a really good addition to allow, if someone wants, have a strong type version of your code. Um, and we just saw that it's not so difficult to do it yourself, a validation runtime. You know, there are plenty of other libraries. Uh, my code will be there out. And uh, there's, you know, growing fuzz in Python community to, you know, maybe introduce like we heard today, like a compiler or uh, some additions in that field. Um, so validate type, I think, as mentioned before, I think it should be a part of um, the, the typing module, because uh, it's just the implementation is just you know boilerplate that should could be done like that has to be done in, in any project. And uh, the last thing to say that yeah, in some projects is the uh, the runtime validations is very good thing to have to you know ensure that the the code is less error prone. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, I don't think we have much time, except you have a really quick, 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 quick question because we need to get ready for the next one. Really quick, please. I actually had two questions, but I'll ask one. Okay. <laughs> so uh, since this type annotation is littered across the code, and the examples you have shown were for the primitive data types, but if we want to... Sorry? The, the examples that you used were for primitive data types, but if you want to use for complex data types, do you think it will create problem while unit testing in which you want to use things like mock, where you replace the object with a mocked object? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you said primitive types, right? Or no? Uh, I'm saying the examples for a primitive type, but if yeah. you want to use complex yeah. types. So, but this is uh, the main reason why I suggest uh, that this <coughs> underscore validate type uh, function 
should be part of typing module and you know should be um, uh, getting the uh, ba basically by getting any type declaration could be co co complex, rich, nested, big. Um, it uh, would implement all this validation uh, recursively, and you know I could show my implementation of it, and I think you know it captures most of the cases. Uh, but uh, of course, you know like um, this actual validation of a type, uh, especially for new declared types or or more um, sophisticated cases, you know, it's a whole new, <laughs> a whole new problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think I'm sure she's gonna be around today. Yeah. So if you wanna ask your second question, for example, or any more questions, uh, she will be here. So thank you very much for your talk. Thank you.